Hey everybody, this is Dan the Chess Enthusiast and I'm here with the Algar Gambit, which is the third and final gambit for white in the King's Gambit Accepted Classical Variation. Now for those of you who don't know, the Classical Variation is uh, the following after black accepts the gambited pawn on f4, white develops the knight to f3, and in response to this black uh, plays g5, which is the Classical Variation. There are other variations which I will be covering in future videos, namely knight to f6, bishop d7, and uh, pawn to d6 and pawn to d5. But first, let's go over the Algar Gambit. So, as I said, the pawn comes down to g5. In response to this, white is going to push its own pawn to h4, and black is going to push the pawn to g4. In this position, uh, black, I'm sorry, white has two options. It can either play knight to e5, which is the Kizaritsky Gambit, the focus of a previous video, or it can go to uh, g5, which is the Algar Gambit. I did want to go back one move, however, uh, and just uh, point out a move that black might play in this position. It's a bad move, and you probably won't see it that often. But if in this position you see uh, pawn to f6, uh, that's a really big mistake because uh, since white was going to sacrifice the knight anyway, white can simply come in and capture the pawn on g5. Black can recapture. And then you have queen out to h5, and you can already see, I'm not even going to go into detail, but you can see that this is a, a really strong move, and black is, uh, has uh, already made a, a blunder in the opening. So again, you're probably not going to see that move very often, but if you do, that's how you can take uh, advantage of it. So uh, we have pawn to g4, uh, knight out to g5 from here. I'm just going to go through the rest of the main line, and then I'm going to go over a couple of variations. The main line continues here with the pawn playing to h6, uh, attacking the knight yet again. And here the knight is going to simply capture the pawn on f6 and uh, basically forcing the king to recapture, um, moving to f7. From here the main line continues with uh, the knight playing out to c3, and black is going to develop its own knight to c6. From here you can have pawn to d4, establishing uh, another pawn in the center for white. And black is actually going to play here pawn to f3. Now the goal of this move is to try to plug up the f-file, which is uh, a really strong attacking file for white in the king's gambit accepted. Since it uh, usually early on in the king's gambit becomes uh, half open and eventually fully open. Uh, the rook here on h1 loves to, in the castle position, uh, put a lot of influence along this f-file. And so what black is trying to do is uh, pluck up that file, and uh, white is going to capture the pawn on f3. And in this position, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for white to, uh, to exploit the semi-open uh, f-file. From here, black is going to develop its own uh, bishop to e7. White's going to hit a check on c4. Uh, black is going to give back uh, a little bit more material and play the pawn to d5. Uh, the reason black does this is because it opens up access for this light square bishop to jump into the game later on. So white is obviously going to capture the pawn and then the king is going to move to g7. And then from here, white's going to castle. Because uh, if you look in this position right here, uh, you'll notice that there are two attackers on this h4 pawn. And, uh, you know, if black... Uh, white can castle and then if black wants to it can come in and capture the pawn but uh at least white in this position is already castled and is uh is ready to continue with the attack so those are the ends of that's the end of the main line for the alcar gambit uh, but as i said there were a couple of variations that i wanted to go over uh, the first variation is here on move five from black after the knight plays to g5 um the the main line continues if you remember with the pawn playing to h6 However, another move that you might see from black which uh, isn't as strong is the knight to f6. Because what can happen here is the pawn can play to e5, attacking the knight. Uh, black can play its own queen to uh, e7, which is pinning the knight down, I'm sorry, pinning the pawn down to the king. But after white plays queen d2, uh, the knight has to move and the knight can play to h5. From here, white is going to develop its own knight to c3. And black is going to jump its knight onto g3, which is forking the queen and the rook. The queen obviously is going to save herself by playing to c4, which is putting a lot of pressure on this f7 pawn. And then if black wants to, it can come in and capture the e5 pawn with check. Uh, 
but then white can simply block the check with the bishop on to e2. From here, uh, white, I'm sorry, black can capture the rook on h1, but then the queen comes in to f7, uh, hit the check, forcing the king back to d8, and then from here you have pawn to d4, and this is just a much, much better position for white, even though white is down a lot of material in this position, uh, in fact, six pawns worth of material. Uh, it has such a lead, in, white has such a lead in development that uh, it's going to be able to, uh, you know, have a, have a really good game here. For example, uh, the only two pieces that black has developed in this position are the queen and the knight. The knight here in h1 is pretty lonely, not really doing anything at all. And uh, the queen here is under attack, and there's really just not a lot of good squares for the queen to go to. Whereas uh, white already has the queen developed, uh, both the knights developed, the uh, the bishop is developed here on e2, and uh, both this queen and this knight here are in very close proximity to uh, black's king. So uh, this is, as I said, a pretty strong position for white. All of that comes about from uh, move 5 here if black uh, plays the knight out to f6. And I, I just want to say that these aren't necessarily the best moves. This is just one example of what can happen if the knight plays the, to f6. In general, uh, it's acknowledged, though, that knight out to f6 in this position is not the best move. Um, instead, as I said, the best move is uh, h7. And the next variation we're going to look at is in this position right here. Um, in this position, white really needs to be patient because two knee-jerk uh, moves that white might want to play in this position are queen out to g4 capturing this pawn and the bishop out to c4 hitting a check on the king. Both moves, however, are not really that good because they, uh, they do nothing to really give uh, white any sort of compensation for the gameted knight. Uh, for example, if we go over the queen coming out to g4, it can capture the pawn the knight can uh, play to f6 attacking the queen, the queen can capture the pawn on f4, and then we have uh, bishop to uh, d6, and in this position you'll notice that um, you know black has been able to develop with a couple of tempos already, and uh, the king, even though it's kind of out in the open at the moment, there's no real easy way to attack the king. Uh, because white only has really one piece developed, which is this queen here. Uh, there's no, as I said before, there's no real compensation for uh, the gambited uh, pawn in the beginning. You'll notice that white is uh, down here a pawn, uh, but as I said, there's just no compensation for that pawn. Um, the other move that uh, I wanted to look at in this position was the bishop playing out to c4, hitting an, an immediate check. Again, this doesn't really do anything to uh, give white any sort of decisive advantage. Black here can play the pawn down to d5, uh, which is opening up access for uh, this bishop here and giving back a little bit of material. Uh, white can capture the pawn and force the king over to g7. From here, the pawn can play to d4. You have pawn to f3, uh, kind of similar to the uh, other variation that we looked at in the main line on the pawn can capture on f3 from here the uh, sorry the knight can play out to f6 um, attacking the bishop but uh, white instead of retreating the bishop is just going to play the knight out to c3 because if white I'm sorry if black comes in and uh, captures this bishop white's going to be able to recapture with the knight and have a, a really good centralized knight in the position um, in response to this however Black is simply going to develop its bishop down to b4, which is pinning down the knight to the king. And in this position, uh, the bishop does have to fall back uh, to b3. From here, you can have pawn to c5 from black. Uh, white can push the pawn to d5, and then black can develop its knight on b to d7. And uh, the key thing to notice in this position is that there really is no compensation. White is still down a pawn worth of material in this position. And... Uh, that's about it. There's no sort of lead in development. Uh, there's no strong attacking lines in this position. Um, this is a, a pretty good position for black and not so great for white. So that's why in this position, uh, white really just wants to be a little bit patient, develop a few more pieces before going on to any sort of uh, strong attack. Uh, 
uh, from here the final variation that I wanted to look at was in this position right here the main line continued with the pawn pushing to f3 trying to plug up the f-file um, however another strongly recommended move in this position is uh, pawn to d5 now this looks like a pretty sensible move because it's kind of counterattacking in the center but uh, it's not really that great uh, for black because it gives white a chance if white plays properly to really uh, you know have a really strong position uh, later on in the game for example what might happen is uh, here black can uh, I'm sorry white can capture the pawn here on f4 with the bishop black can bring its own bishop down to b4 uh, pinning the knight down to the king you can have bishop d2 and uh, black can double up white's pawns here the knight out to f6 uh, black can cancel white uh, I'm sorry black in this position uh, definitely wants to get the king off of that open file opposite from the uh, the rook so it plays the king over to g7 and you have pawn to c4 and this is a really interesting move because uh, you know what really can white uh, I'm sorry what really can black do in this position uh, to counterattack. Uh, let me just show you two really quick uh, examples. Um, one is if the pawn captures on e4, white can push the pawn to uh, d5 attacking the knight, then I can fall back to e7. From here you can have the bishop play to e5, which is putting two attackers uh, on the knight and pinning the knight down to the king. So to defend, black needs to play the rook over to f8. Uh, the queen can play up to d4 and that's adding yet another attacker. So uh, Black is going to play the knight out to g6, which is adding another defender because it is allowing the queen here to see this f6 square directly. From here, you can have the exchange of pieces on f6 and the pawn to h5. And uh, again, black's just kind of really in not that great of a position. There's no really good square for this knight to go to. Um, you know, a couple of squares where it would just be captured outright or uh, allow this rook here to be captured on f6. And uh, white has a much more active position. You know, black still has these two pieces that are undeveloped and not really doing anything. Whereas white has a uh, castle position. This rook is really well placed on the f file. This queen is beautiful in the center of the board. Even this bishop uh, could jump into the action at some point. So this is just a much more active position for white. Um, if we go back, however, after we have. Uh, pawn here to c4 if you want a really crazy variation. Uh, one other thing that you might see is in this position black can capture the pawn on e4, uh, white can capture the pawn on d5 attacking the knight, black can <coughs> excuse me black can counterattack with uh, the knight to c3 and here comes a really really crazy move. White can simply ignore the attack on the queen and capture the knight on c6 because after the knight captures the queen on d1 uh, white is going to hit a series of checks uh, forcing the king over to h5 and then in this position uh, once the pawn captures uh, on b7 you'll notice that this pawn is uh, currently forking two pieces the rook here and the bishop the bishop cannot capture the pawn because that would lead to checkmate uh, i'm not going to go into it but if you like to, you can pause the video uh, basically, if the uh, bishop here leaves the defense of this f5 square, it's going to be checkmate or uh, massive material loss for black uh, very quickly. Basically, black has worked itself into a, a bit of a knot here, and there's no real clear way how uh, black is going to be able to get out of that knot. Even though it's up uh, a ton of material, um, this is still not really that, that great of a position for black, and uh, it's actually very dangerous, and if black isn't careful, uh, it could lose the game very quickly. So, um, those are all of the variations of the Algar camera that I could find. Let me just bring up the end of the uh, main lines right here, after white castles. Um, again, I really hope you guys enjoyed going over the videos. Uh, I'm going to try to get up the Grandmaster game and the videos on the other variations of the uh, King's Gambit accepted that I mentioned in the beginning of this video as soon as I can but I am going uh, through a lot of stuff in my personal life I'm just I'm moving and uh, I don't know how much time I'm going to have uh, to make these videos but I will make them as soon as I can if you have any questions or comments uh, I would certainly appreciate to hear them and thanks for watching take care bye